Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're at Imperial College uh, as a 1,000 subscriber special, so and thanks everyone for all the support that I've been getting recently, it's been really great, and uh, keep the video suggestions coming along. Today we're going to do one on a topic which I find really interesting, which is approximating the factorial, and it's called Stirling's approximation. And it is going to involve the gamma function, which I know a lot of you will probably be familiar with, but just in case you're not, we define gamma as n plus 1 for at least for integer inputs to be equal to n factorial. And of course there's a bit of discontinuity there because this is a continuous function whereas the factorial is discrete and for integers. But we're dealing with integers today. And the gamma function is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times t to the n with respect to t. And if you just choose any integer value of n, um, and, and try and work this integral through for yourself, you'll see very quickly how it works. Uh, it just uses repeated integration by parts to produce the factorial of the number that you put in. But the question is, how can we use this to make approximations for large values of n in n factorial? Now the first thing that we're going to observe is that t to the n is equal to e to the power of n times the natural log of t. And that means that we can rewrite what we're integrating to be just one function, all in terms um, of an exponent of e. And that's the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times e to the n ln t, which means, of course, we're going to be adding because they have the same base. So we're going to be integrating e to the n ln t minus t with respect to t. And at this point, it might seem a bit confusing about where to go next with our approximation, but we've got to remember any time we're approximating it's a good idea to consider the Taylor series of a function that we're looking at and that's where we get our small angle approximations from for sine and cosine. And in this case we're not going to Taylor expand the entire function, we're just going to Taylor expand the f what we've got here in the exponent. So we're going to Taylor expand the function of t n ln t minus t. And I only want to consider the first three terms of the Taylor expansion because after that point it becomes kind of arbitrary and we're only trying to make a pretty good approximation here. Now, in general, the Taylor approximation for a function of t will be equal to, well, first thing we have to consider is where are we expanding around? Now, with the Maclaurin series, this expansion is around zero. But given that I'm approximating n factorial, I want my expansion to be around n, which means that I'm going to first evaluate the function at n. I'm then going to add that to the derivative evaluated at n multiplied by t minus n. And I'm then going to add that to the second derivative evaluated at n divided by 2 factorial, which is of course just 2, multiplied by t minus n squared. And I'll continue going on up to infinity, but as I said, we're only considering the first three here. So f of n is obviously very easy to calculate. We would just swap out all our t's for n's, and we get n ln n minus n. Differentiating this function is also relatively simple. Don't forget we're differentiating with respect to t. The derivative of n ln t with respect to t is just n over t. And of course, the derivative of negative t is just negative 1. Now, when we evaluate this at n, that means that f prime of n is equal to n over n minus 1, which is 1 minus 1, which is 0. And so we can completely ignore this term in our Taylor expansion, seeing as it just goes to 0. So now let's look at how the second derivative behaves. Well, f prime prime of n is going to be equal to the derivative of n over t minus 1 with respect to t and then subbing in uh, n for t. So if we differentiate negative 1, it's a constant, so we ignore it. And so we've just got to um, derive n over t. And of course, that's just, that's just power rule. That's n times t to the negative 1. We bring the power down and take one away from the power, and so that leaves us with negative n over t squared. But since we're evaluating n, it will be over n squared. And you can clearly see a nice cancellation there, leaving us with just negative 1 over n. All right, great. So we're in a really good position to evaluate our Taylor series now because all we've got to do is swap out f prime prime of n for negative 1 over n so it's going to be minus 1 over 2n not forgetting our 2 factorial times t minus n squared and we're going to leave it there so really this should be a roughly equal to sign okay so now we have Taylor expanded 
our function of t enough, we're going to rewrite our integral. So we're now looking at the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power of this whole thing here, which is n times the natural log of n minus n times by e to the power of negative t minus n squared over 2n with respect to t. Now given that we're integrating with respect to t, this entire part of the integral here is a constant because it's all in terms of n. So let's take it out. e to the power of n ln n is n to the n, and e to the power of negative n is 1 over e to the n. So that's the constant we're pulling out, and that's being multiplied by the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t minus n squared over 2n with respect to t. So any of you who have seen the uh, evaluation of the Gaussian integral might see where this is going. We're going to be looking to do something that's in the form of a Gaussian integral, but we've got to make a few substitutions to get there first. The first one that's coming to my mind is to let u equal t minus n. And of course that means that du is just equal to dt, so we don't have any complicated things to do there. And actually that leaves us with our integral being equal to n to the n over e to the n times the integral from negative n to infinity, because of course infinity minus n is still infinity, of e to the negative u squared over 2n du. And we're almost there with this now. Uh, I think the nicest way to get this into the form of a Gaussian integral would be to say, all right, well, we're, we've got an exponent of u squared over 2n, which means if I make a substitution uh, y equals u divided by root 2n, which would of course leave me with dy times root 2n being equal to du, then I'll be able to write this entire exponent as just one thing squared, and it would be the Gaussian integral. So this, again, is equal to n to the n over e to the n times by the integral from, well, it's going to be negative n over root 2 n to infinity of e to the power of negative v squared dv. But we've got to remember also we're multiplying by a root 2 n over here. Now this bound might be something that's kind of worrying you a little bit. How are we going to deal with this? It's not going to give us something nice, but we've got to remember that we're dealing with large values of n here. And so as we let n approach infinity, we can consider this lower bound as just a negative infinity. And that really neatens things up for us, because now this is a Gaussian integral, and we know what the value of the Gaussian integral between negative infinity and positive infinity is. It's the square root of pi. And if any of you haven't come across that before, feel free to let me know in the comments uh, and we can, I could do a video proving it or talk to you about it there. And since that's equal to root pi, we've come up to a really nice approximation. So let's rewrite it over here on the board where we've got some space. We've got that our integral is roughly equal to n to the n over e to the n times the square root of 2n times the square root of pi, also known as the square root of 2 pi n. So there we go, that's how we've worked through. Um, we've gone from the gamma function, we've used the Taylor series expansion around n, and we've played around with the integral a bit until we get it into the form of a Gaussian integral. And this left us with this really nice and quite satisfying, I think, uh, expression as an approximation for large values of n with n factorial. So thanks for watching everyone, I hope you've enjoyed. Feel free to uh, leave any comments with any questions that you've got and actually if you want to try deriving the weak Stirling approximation which isn't quite as good but will still provide you with a rough one I'll leave that as an exercise in the comments but it does make use of the fact that well n factorial is of course going to be a product up to n and how could we turn a product into a sum there's a particular function you might want to use there and then how could we use integrals to kind of explore another approximation there. So thanks for watching everyone and see you in the next video. Bye.